In this video, we race the brand new Group 3 car in Gran Turismo, the Mercedes AMG GT3 car, and your eyes are not deceiving you, the Olympics is here in GT7. Hello everyone and welcome to another Gran Turismo video where we're looking at the new patch. So head straight into Brand Central because we're going straight into the new cars where we have new Super Formula cars. And here you have it. The Honda is right there, the 23 car. And it's 1 million credits. So obviously you can see the Super Formula there. Obviously there's going to be lots of F1 liveries applied to these, I imagine. Only one livery there though to pick from. As always with these videos, let's have a listen to the car. So yeah, sounds interesting. Sounds quite tinny, to be honest with you. Lots of liveries will be made for these cars, I'm sure. So the fact that you can only buy one livery isn't bad in the grand scheme of it. I'm sure all the other liveries will be made anyway. Now, you did see where the Honda was. So the Toyota is right next to it. Once again, another million credits. I'm glad I've just earned just enough credits. Although we'll get onto that a little bit later on. And again, for the Toyota, there is only one livery available for you. Let's have a listen to the car then. Sounds more like a remote control car. That right? does remind me of those days. Uh, but again, does sound interesting and nice. Right, next car. We're going to go to Brand Central then. And where are we heading to this time? Ooh, Europe. Here we go. And AMG. Because if you haven't seen the news already, there is a brand new GT3 car in Gran Turismo. This is like a first in terms of new cars. Look, it's a 2020 car. What is going on? We're finally getting some newer cars. Happy days indeed. It's in orange there at the livery. This is a brand new car. It only comes in the one livery, the orange. Let's have a listen to the car then. Oh, sounds very deep and grumbly. If you've ever heard an AMG GT3 car in real life, it does sound like that. You can hear it around the track. It's very, very low in terms of its tone. Sounds very nice. Very nice indeed. Now, the final car available to you is in a Legend car dealership this time. And where are we going for this? Well, it's the Jaguar XJ220. It's an absolute legend coming to Gran Turismo. And look how nice it looks. Does it sound as good as it looks? Let's find out. Oh, it does sound good, doesn't it? It does sound good. You can hear the whistle in the background as well. Really, really nice addition to Gran Turismo. So there are your four new cars. So that is exactly where to buy them. And at least the Jaguar is cheap as well at 600k. As expected, it's been millions and not being able to afford it. Right, next up, we have the Olympics. So the Olympics are in Gran Turismo, or coming back to Gran Turismo, the competition. Now, you can click the top right icon, and then you've got to do all that. But I'd recommend this way to go to the Olympics. So click sport mode here. Uh, and actually, before we do get to the Olympics, actually, look at this. Look at the daily races. It's actually showing all three this time and the countdown this is a brilliant update to gran turismo now you don't have to guess on the others although we generally know but it's nice to see that they put all three there to know right click into the time trial mode where there are actually three time trials now on offer so there's eight million credits on offer here eight million so click into the olympic event there and then you can see it's four million on offer in this one a little hard to get the four million of course because it's one and a half percent uh but what you do if you click enter it'll then ask you to sign up again it tells you the I did record this, but I don't want you to see my email address, so uh, let's ignore all that. But it's the easier way to sign up because it's all signed in already, and you just hit enter. That is the better way to sign up, so do it that way indeed. And you can see the bot there as well. There are the sponsors of the Olympics, the Olympic partners. They're not obviously sponsors of Gran Turismo, except Toyota, as far as I'm aware. Um, but even so, you can see the partners there. And what we're going to do, we're going to take a lap. So I've actually done a couple of laps. I'm down at 13 miles at this moment in time, so I think three laps with a couple of retries in there as we go into turn one. Now this car, one thing to note with the Olympics, be careful of track limits. They are deadly. That white line is very much the limit. Go over it and you will get a red lap. Interestingly though, if you go over it and go over the line, it will still register the lap in terms of a delta. So you can still follow that lap. So it's not always necessary to retry. The penalty time doesn't come on. You don't get a penalty. It's just a red lap. So a really good way to do the time trial to prepare Gran Turismo. So fair play for that one as we head into the left-hander. It might have been this case 
for the other time trials in the past, but I don't do them very often. So, yeah, it's just nice to see that that's available. You see all these signs here, multicolors, obviously, representing the Olympics and the nations of the world. During the Toyota Group 1 car, the new one, obviously, the GR... Is it GR010? Uh, as we head towards the final corner. Now, they put it on ma racing medium tyres, which is interesting. It means it's a bit more slippy than you anticipate, and you have to brake earlier than expected. So do keep that in mind, okay, when you're doing this time trial. Break a bit earlier than expected, be careful of traction on exit, and you should be able to at least get the silver time, which is the top 5%. Top 1.5% is going to be quite difficult. The time's going to reduce. This is a top 1.5% time. This is going to be a 16.1, currently 16.2 for that. It's going to go into the 15s, I'm sure, by the time everybody does that. Next up, then, we have some fixes. So this is the main fix I can see. It's the Audi RF... Uh, the DTM car has changed sound. Have a listen. This is the old. You can hear that, a very different sound. It sounds more high-pitched. It's what I would have expected. I did think it sounded a bit weird before, but I, you know, I didn't know, so I just accepted it. So, yeah, definitely a big change there. And finally, we did jump into the new uh, GT3 car for a race at Yamagiwa to see how good it was. In time trial, the Supra still dominates this car, but even so, let's see how it does in the race. As we, here we go. A few other people have chosen it as well. Top of, well, second place there, EcoBoost. They had actually gone for it as well. So that's the lead AMG in this one as we go in towards turn one. Having a Tenza ahead of us here. Porsche in the distance as well. And there are Supras in this, of course, because it's the Supra. Mikey doesn't get the best run out of that corner. So we're going to go too wide through the S's here. It's very dangerous, but uh, even so, we give each other space here. Going through here. Oh, just a space there. Oh, I tried to give me more space. I think it just understeers off into the barrier there. Uh, sorry to see that, Mikey, but hopefully he can catch up to the rest of the field as we head into this left-hander. So, so far, in the distance, we are seeing the AMG still competing with other cars. So, it's got a fairly okay bop, it appears, as the Greek there going a bit slow out that left-hander. Going to go down the inside here as we head towards the chicane then. And we're going to look to slow it down then as we go into here. Slow it down. Uh, oh, a bit of overstay there as we clip the curb. Just trying to catch it here. Unfortunately, we uh, slowed the Greek down a lot there. Nothing I can do there. I've already lost the car um, as we continue on out. So, we're going to have a bit of a race with the Greek here. But uh, even so, well played for avoiding me there, actually. Really well played, actually. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Smuddle the Verdle? I don't know. Uh, anyway, through, I tried to pronounce it when I said I wasn't going through. Anyway, continue on through there. I'm going to fast forward a little bit here, get down towards where the action is. As we go into here, yellow flag in the distance. Always yellow flags here. And in fact, there's also one of the AMGs going off there. So we gain another position. So what can I say about this car? It does feel a bit sluggish, to be honest with you, as we go into this right-hander. It does feel a little bit sluggish. I'm not sure why, it just feels it. You know? But other than that, it's actually quite a nice handling car, to be honest with you. It really does handle very well, which I expect from the AMG Mercedes. It's an, a front MR car, essentially. So the engine is behind the front wheel, so it's an FMR, um, but essentially it still counts as FR in Gran Turismo. Let's so continue on out of there, then. We're caught up to the Renault RS01, then. This is the Renault GT3 car. So we head down towards the chicane once again as we come into here. I was hoping to scare the French driver, and it looks like I did scare them a little bit because they head off here. They actually come on very nicely indeed. There's Mac Pepe or Mac PP. And uh, yeah, well, well played with the sportsmanship stuff there as we go through the left hander. Looking to catch up to the next French driver, also in a Renault. They're representing their manufacturer as well here, the French, as we head in to the right hander. So we've got another position here from Fantastic Jay. Jay, you are fantastic! I will say that now as we continue on out of there as we catch up to the next AMG Mercedes then. This is Malcolm as they go towards that left-hand side. We have a really good run here as we go around the outside as we head towards this fast left-hander. They actually come out of that completely as I think there's a bit of contact there between MG, Flash and Bahamas. Hello to both of you. You both normally say hello back and comment in the comments as well, of course. So shout out to both of you here. And Bahamas joined RTR there, it looks like. So we're going to head down towards the chicane then looking on the inside of the Supra with the classic Castrol livery there. If you remember that from your GT1 days. Through the right we go. And yeah, it handles the chicanes okay. Handles bumps okay, really, in the grand scheme of GT3 cars. 
as we head up towards the hairpin here. And uh, Bahamas going for that inside line on MG Flash then as we get behind MG Flash here. Well, was looking to try and follow him around the outside. Wasn't going to quite work. Going to try again. Not going to quite work again. A bit of a wiggle there from the GTR as we head down here then and in towards this very dangerous braking zone, which is why I was just slowing the car down completely here as MG Flash just struggling there with a bit of understeer, it looked like, as we head towards the final corner then. And we're going to look around the outside, try and get a good, good run off the corner here to try and overtake MG Flash then as we go around here. Try and beat it out of here very quickly. MG Flash tries to say and gets a bit of overstay here. We're going to go past them. And in fact, that is going to be it in terms of this race as we advance towards the final lap then and we finish. So, it, it, oh, this car, the AMG, it does keep up with the Supra in the race, to be honest with you. Uh, the Supra is probably still a little bit better, but that's what you expect. So it will be at the forefront of GT3 cars, is what I'm trying to say here. Supra is in its league of its own. It is near the front, though, this AMG. And that is going to be it for this patch video. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel to stay in touch with all the latest content. But that's going to be it for me, folks. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in another video. I'll live stream again very soon.